You don't remember what happened to Rihanna? You could be the next victim of the decade. They're going to love you. Just, just to sink that nigga. Fuck him. Right? To say he did it. Meg goes ahead and does it. Yes, we get it. Tory goes to jail. But Meg has never been more hated than now. Like, Meg just dropped the project. And, you know, some people might think it's a paid campaign behind it. No, it's not. Like, people just like watching Meg fail now. Like, the, her, the press around that situation has really turned bad for Meg. Like, people celebrate her failures and downfalls. And Rock Nation, who allegedly was behind even encouraging or assisting her. By the way, Desiree Perez sat in court in a couple of those hearings when Tory was on trial. And when asked to, you know, um, defend or, or, or substantiate some of the things with Meg about the trial, Alex Spiro, Rock Nation's lawyer, spoke up. So Rock Nation seemingly, they're realizing that all this shit came back around on Meg. Yes, Tory's locked up, we get it. But it hurt Meg's career as opposed to help it. And now they're at the point saying, we finna sue you niggas, okay? Whoever y'all are, y'all bloggers. And maybe we get into that now, right? Because I just did a nice little intro. Let's, let's get into that now. So here's here's the funny thing. Let me see if I can get to it. Um, I was going to play a little bit of, of this. Maybe we'll play it afterwards. So where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go? Meg Thee Stallion's lawyer, Alex Firo, says on Monday he plans to take action against bloggers who continue to spread false information, okay? Now, this is a very interesting thing, and this is a lawyer, if you ask me, using legalese to threaten people because in this country we have something called freedom of press, right? And whether you like something or not, the press, the media is allowed to operate in a way that is not under coercion, force, threat, or anything else. It's the reason why even technically and infamously, when federal authorities have, you know, tried to squeeze or twist the arms of people in the press to say, hey, you have a source that told you blah, 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 blah. They're going to be key to our investigation. Tell us who the source is. The media could tell them, fuck off, no, we have a right to, for, we have a right defended by the Constitution of freedom of press, you can't extort or force us to tell you our source. A lot of media operates, and by the way, you know, obviously they didn't, um, remember when they were trying to say in court how academics got the whatever, the uh, discovery? First of all, if they had, if, if, if that, first of all, the, the judge there is a California judge, they had no jurisdiction to, um, subpoena me to that court because I don't live under the jurisdiction of, of California. But even if they did, and even when they try to, uh, they try to do a deposition for me and Drake under the X case. Yeah, you could. First of all, the judge has never granted it. But even if it did, you would have to then come to a, a a New York or New Jersey judge that I live in in their jurisdiction, and they would have to grant. It. So it was a whole process anyway. Even if that was done, I would have shown up in both situations with an attorney. And this, these type of um, tactics work against these bloggers who make 50 cents and lie, okay? So these people who are non-successful, but I don't care you got blonde hair, blue eyes, whatever suit you wear, the, the threats are kind of like hollow in a bit, right? It, um, unless somebody's doing some crazy shit, right? Now, obviously, defamation is a thing, even though, to be honest, um, Meg Thee Stallion being a music entertainer play this you know how many people call me a fat piece of shit that i want to sue right there's just certain things opinions about me i can't really if somebody if i say if i say megs a lying ass hoe there's nothing she could do it's just it, it, you can't again there's no defamation law that actually protects someone who's a public figure and someone else commented on a public figure their opinion about said public figure now there is the defamation under certain um things where you're where you're intentionally and putting out to the world that this person is doing something either categorically false that could damage their career um, rather than just giving an opinion piece. So anyway, I said that to say in either or case, right? If they had subpoenaed me to the Tory case and said, Hey, how did you get, or which by the way, nobody knows I got nothing, right? How you see the discovery?
I have no problem paying an attorney. Hey, tell these motherfuckers I got a right. I got a right to not give up my sources. Y'all go figure it out. You figure out how I got it, right? And and that's actually constitutionally protected. But also, they can't threaten me with arrest or nothing like that to like force me to like. Oh no, tell us no, motherfucker. So anyway, I say that to say. And by the way, I don't. You know, for anybody who cares, I don't think this has anything to do with me. I think there's there's a segment of of media personalities and bloggers, so to speak that have heavily focused on the Tory and Meg case and continue to afterwards. Like, we covered this case. Ooh, again, we like Tory. We hope he gets out. Um, we, we actually still doubt the veracity of exactly what the prosecutor said happened here. But we're not going every day trying to like, oh, my God, fuck this or whatever. We don't give a fuck like that. Okay. Now, I think that's what he's targeted, right? But if it did involve me, that's my statement, right? So let's let, let, let's get to... um. Supposedly what was said. It says Spiro said on Monday he plans to take actions. And by the way, we've heard this about from Meg Thee Stallion a lot, a long time ago about planning to take action against suing media personality, which is another thing. This is another thing I'll say. And, you know, I don't want to name any of these people who I think this is targeting at. Again, I don't think it's me, but who cares? Um, I don't want to put their name in this rant because I, I don't want to also like just throw the like throw the alley oop like people look at them. Now, nah, I don't know. They're, they're noticed enough, or not noticed enough. I don't, I don't want to put them in the crosshairs, even though I think most of these people you're not, you know. Some some of them I'm actually even pretty cool with. But it says, Meg, Meg had said before she was going to start suing people. We ain't seen the lawsuits yet. Now, I think Meg has to realize, you're playing a very interesting game. The reason why Meg's career is in the dumps right now, you need the media. You can't shit on the media. And even if the media don't believe you about this thing or you're, they're not going to give you this little damsel in distress, queen for a day, like, you know, uh, uh, um, tiara that you could wear as some princess. You can't force people to like you, right? When you start to threaten lawsuits against the media, all it does, because these days you're not even, it's not even corporations. These are like humans. They're going to go extra hard at you. They're going to now highlight every one of your failures. They're going to just make you look even more dumb. And I think that's why she hasn't filed a lawsuit. And by the way, I'll give an advice to Rock Nation, a bunch of nimwits over there. Y'all need to repair Meg Thee Stallion, great rapper, right? She should be, she should have been the incumbent for, for Nikki, except, well, Nikki is shitted on her. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know how we... How do we get to the point where Meg isn't seen as this polarizing figure in music? Let me tell you how it works, Rock Nation. You see, unlike media, for example, I'm a super polarizing figure. Like, they post me in the shade room, and if it's 20,000 comments, 10,000 hate me. Or actually, 18,000 hate me. It's all good. But here's the thing. I make money off niggas who like me and hate me. It don't even matter. The thing with music artists is that most of the products that y'all are pushing require people to like you. Likeability needs to be up. So when Meg has this like really divisive um, atmosphere and how people think about her, creating more people that don't like her don't work. And the media is always going to be a conduit to kind of put you in a light of how they like you or not. So threatening to sue these people don't help Meg. So for the people over at Rock Nation, y'all need to work on her. Like, I'm going to be honest with you, and I'm going to give you a free game. I, I should invoice y'all for that, but the last time I invoiced you was for some Meek shit. Thanks, Meek. Um, what I will say is what y'all need to do. And by the way, that's when Dream Chasers was over there. I was, you know, texting everybody. Come on. Um, what y'all do need to do is this. This is how I view Meg. And, and everybody at Rock Nation, when I sit, play this video in your little stupid ass boardroom, I'm just give you free game. Okay. Meg Thee Stallion, great rapper, has the image, has the look. But, she, but she's just hated. Y'all have to start to do things to identify, and again, you could do it without having her roll back this victim thing. I get it. You want to roll it out as, I got shot, cool. You got it. But you got to get the dudes. Like, men don't fuck with Meg. They're all kind of feeling like, oh, this is one of them cases where a bitch lied on a nigga. And whether she lied or not, that's the thought. So how do you roll that thought back? You have to get, it's like, think about like politics, right? Like, you know, Shit, Trump was weak with black people for a while. You know what Trump started doing? I right, fuck it. I'm at the bodegas. And again, I'm not saying pander, but you I gotta do some shit 
that gets Meg a little bit less hated. And by the way, Meg's hated by some women too because they feel like, you know, for whatever reason, you know, at least good for Tori. Tori was like an R&B dude, so like he had a, a good amount of female fans. They just feel like she's capping. They feel like she's capping based on her reaction, how she acts and moves in the aftermath of it. They're like, nah, this chick is lying. That's what y'all got to target and fix. Suing a couple bloggers, what you going to do, try to silence them? Half of them don't have money to go back and forth to court with you. Like, Spiro, you're defending Eric Adams, for God's sakes. What you going to do, sue a blogger that makes like like 100000 a year? What are you going to get out of that? You can't put nobody in jail. So cut that out. So what you going to do, sue them to shut them up? Well, well, that just sounds, that's even more shitty. And And just generally how the media works, when you start attacking even the smallest voices to censor them, the loudest voices, like mine, start speaking up. So, again, it, it just doesn't make any sense of, like, this whole thing where you have Rock Nation's lawyer coming out. If y'all don't stop making Meg look crazy, I'm going to sue. You're not going to get no money. And now, now we really don't like you. Now we really don't like you. You're trying to sue bloggers, nigga? Get out of here. Rock Nation, we don't give a fuck about y'all. So that's the point, and that's where we get to. Now, um, they said Spiro said uh, he plans to take action against bloggers who continue to spread false information. That's another thing we got to think about. Well, I'm, I'm wondering what that action looks like, right? Because here's also the thing, right? We're going to get into the Tory case a bit too. Tory, Tory Lanes. And by the way, let me, let me speak about what's necessarily where, where that came from, right? Once again, if you guys, you know, want to, theacademy.blog. Go to theacademy.blog. When you get there, you will see some of the, the paper. This is the same paperwork I'll be reading on, on here. I, I'm uploading all of them here. They're court cases, filings, all that type of stuff, body cam stuff. You'll be able to see it raw and uncut. Not by me scrolling them, but you could go look at them. So if you if you read it with your two eyes and use your brain and you say act no you lying nigga that's not what happened I read it I, I got this different def definition or this different that's what I, we want to have an open source you know the one thing I love about media and I think me like forget even complex but all right fine they, they call me number one you know what that was a signal of to all of these companies media is no more gated of these big corporations it's open source. Everything I'm getting, it don't matter what source y'all have. You know, some of these people, they be like, oh, well, you know, they used to get me with, well, I can't be in the room with these guys. Jay-Z will never talk to him. I don't give a fuck if Jay-Z talks to me, right? It's now open source. If you're in North Dakota, if you're in Idaho, if you're in Mexico, you could be in Guatemala or India. If you want to be a part of hip-hop media, and again, not all parts of hip-hop media means that you're giving your opinion. Maybe you just want to be the person who's just you know, kind of curating things about a case and putting out facts and and kind of doing a little bit, digging into the court documents. You could do it, right? It's, it's open it's open source at this point, right? So let me tell you what, what Rot Nation is mad at, right? And by the way, this is up on the site, so anybody can have it. This is this is Tory Lane, a.k.a. Daystar Peterson, his full appeal, right? This is his writ of habeas, uh, habeas corpus. And I'm going to tell you why or partially why I believe that this Mark Spiro nigga is like bent out of shape. Check this out. Um, right here. So everybody's running with running running with this as a headline. And again, we don't even know if this is true. But in just like in reporting, we're going off what he said. She said. Meg said he shot her. He said he didn't. Now again, we're not the cops. We don't we don't have access to the evidence. So we're going off what's said in court. That's at least. Now we could say it's different than a source because it's in paperwork. According to Tory's team, it says the petitioner, which is Tory, asserts that his First Amendment right to seek redress for his grievance has been impaired by these actions. OK, um, and we're going to get to some other stuff, but hold on. Without this exculpatory evidence, the, the petitioner, Tory, can't file a claim for innocence. So that was the new thing they were saying. And, Meg, and Meg, Megan Cutter, if I'm not here to diss you because I do think you do some good work, even though you're biased, you have a side to this. You are on the side of Rock Nation and Megan. I get it because it made you popular. You were basically a beat reporter or wherever you came from. And now you have a site that, you know, is making you money. And you're now the white woman hip hop reporter. I think you've, you've been on Vlad a couple of times. This is how you got popular. 
Also, you even sold merch. Meg the Stallion trial you got popping, and your name is Megan. And you sold even merch off of that. I get it. You're biased. It's cool. I like Tori. I know Tori. Maybe I'm biased too. But it doesn't mean that we can't just be honest with, with, with there's two sides to a lot of this stuff, right? So, for example, the headlines that everybody's going with came from this document right here, right? So, without, so petitioner cannot file the claims of innocence as he's unable to conduct further testing since the firearm and the bullet fragments are missing. So, by the way, this appeal is done under threat of perjury. So, Tory's lawyer and Tory himself are saying in a court, uh, uh, um, a court document, which is an appeal saying, yo, we don't have access to the gun or the fragments that were instrumental in the case. That's a good headline. So you know what every independent media personality did or every independent media outlet did? They looked at it and they said, yo, that's a great headline. They ran that. Now, do we know it's true? No, but he's saying it and he could get, he could get, his whole shit could get dismissed if he's lying. No only lying, hold the shit dismissed. Oh, no appeal, stay in jail, nigga. Right? That's a good headline. Now, of course, when that headline goes out, it creates, and this is why I think Rock Nation's responding, it creates a cycle of people saying, there you go, there you go, this is a cover-up. Yo, y'all can't find a gun no more? Y'all can't find the bullet fragments? Oh, that's, oh, that, that sounds like some cover-up to me. Right? What does that do? It trickles down to people saying that damn lying ass chick Meg. What then that does? She dropped a deluxe to her album. The album did atrocious. Now, granted, it wasn't a new album. It was a deluxe. Okay? But if you guys look, let me go show you. Meg's new album. Let's see if we can find it. Meg's new album dropped hold on hold on where is it where is it where is it, where is it? meg's new album dropped hold on, hold on am i going past it yeah and apparently none of the chart the songs were charting and apparently it did really low sales and meg herself meg herself posted on her story or somewhere she says make sure y'all re-download the album if it's not playing for you it says, I continue, I appreciate you hotties for continuing to support me through all these weird glitches. So now, Meg, think about it. When when a Rock Nation artist is now using the excuse of the system is playing me, come on, y'all are the system damn near. Come on. They're not supporting you, shorty. That's it. I appreciate you hotties for continuing to support me through all the weird glitches these music platforms have been having. Stay positive, and most importantly, enjoy the music. Meg Act 2 is out now, okay? Now, the trickle-down effect is that everybody, after seeing that maybe the bullet and the gun is missing, they're laughing at Meg. They're saying, this is why you're failing. That's why you're flopping. Meg's probably complaining to Rock Nation, and now you have Rock Nation's lawyer out here saying, we finna sue. What you about to sue, to try to shut people up? Like, what type of lawsuits are we talking about, Right? So anyway, let's continue. He says, as he questioned, oh, and then he questioned why a nonprofit legal service such as Unite the People is working on Tory Lane's case. Now, let's think about that in its totality. Alex Spiro, someone who's defending Eric Adams in now a um, indictment, in a literal federal indictment, right? Is the federal indictment or is it state? Uh, it's an indictment regardless. You're defending him in a criminal proceeding. You're you're the guy who worked for for Rock Nation defending whoever they put you to to defend. You end up defending even 21 Savage on his immigration thing. So you're now questioning why a nonprofit legal service is trying to help Tory? I thought you didn't have a horse in the race. Oh, but you do have a horse in the race. The person lying in your pocket. It's Rock Nation and their artist is Meg Thee Stallion. So now you don't even like the fact. And by the way, Spiro is a defense attorney that we've seen. He's a defense attorney. He doesn't like that someone else is trying to help defend someone else. Huh? So clearly this is where you see a political agenda almost being formed, right? Then here's the statement. 
There's a lot of people in jail that need help who tell the truth and who are innocent and deserve to be freed. I rather they spend their time on, on that than nonsense like this. So essentially they're saying to the nonprofit, go help other people. Fuck Tory. That's kind of odd. I didn't know. I didn't know an attorney of your caliber working for working for all for the governor right now, or not governor, mayor Eric Adams. You have an opinion about what nonprofit legal groups should be defending. That's kind of odd. That's odd. But okay. So um, that happened, and um, yeah. Let's get into a little bit more about this whole thing, right? So this is the appeal. You guys can go look at it. It's, it's available on the academy.blog. Um, not going to read the whole thing as long. Um, they basically just show ways that Tory Lanez believe that his rights and freedoms have been, you know, um, uh, been inflicted upon, which, you know, he's seeking relief hoping that he could either get out of jail temporarily or eventually um, for the case or not the case, the verdict to be over, overturned. And, you know, th they have a, a lot of things. It was like, hey, he was he was convicted, blah, blah, blah. And then they're saying that, let's see some more stuff. The driver of the bodyguard. Uh, okay, okay, so th they're putting some facts. Let's just get to the court stuff. We know all the facts already. Overall, the evidence, okay, okay, here's this. To note, forensic testing did not resolve the question who was a shooter. Both Harris and Tory had gunshot residue on their hands. Inexplicably, considering that GSR results and the wildly conflicting testimonial versions of the events, the only DNA sample collected for analysis in comparison to the firearm and magazine was a sample belonging to the petitioner. What does that mean? They're saying... We believe that this was unfair from the get-go. The prosecutors knew that people were going to suggest that Kelsey was a shooter as well. Yet, yet, and by the way, even though um, Sean Kelly showed up in court and pretty much said Tory did it, his previous statement, that's why Tory thought it was his witness, his previous statement said, yeah, I saw them fighting for like the gun, but I seen a woman do it, right? He, she, he basically said he seen the woman do it. So they're saying, why didn't the prosecutor test the woman? Why didn't you test the woman? Why are you only testing the man? Oh, you didn't test the woman because you already made up in your mind that the man did it. Oh, so that's what this paragraph basically means. The test resulted, the test results ruled the petitioner out as a contributor to the DNA recovered and were inconclusive as to the gun. Remember that word inconclusive? <laughs> yeah. Overall, the evidence presented in the underlying trial was conflicting, and since that time, new evidence has come to light that continues to favor the petitions, petitioner uh, Peterson's innocence. Um, therefore, in the interest of justice, petitioner humbly prays such statements will be considered by the Court of Appeals um, to strive to clear himself of said charges, which he's not responsible, okay? Now, some of the other stuff clearly is, um, well, the, other, other analysts have tested or... or done another, you know, well, evaluated that result of the DNA and said, well, really it's not inconclusive. It appears that Tory couldn't have been, um, that DNA found there could have been Tory based on blah, blah, blah reason. And then, of course, they're saying, well, the driver also wants to testify. He's going to clear Tory name too because he submitted a declaration. Um, what else? What else? Okay. So now, and then it says, hey, he can't redress his grievance and fully investigate his claims because unavailable evidence okay so let's see what what that is da, da, da. Uh, let's see what about the missing gun now that's what tory's saying okay this is talking legal shit legal 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 where's about the gun where's about the gun where's about the gun okay all right okay at trial, the people presented the evidence to Mr. Peterson's DNA was not found in the magazine, right? They said the Mr. Peters' DNA was not found on the magazine and was not definitively present on the weapon itself. However, Mr. Zapata, the criminal, the state's criminalist, testified that based on the interpretation of the testing, he couldn't exclude Tory's DNA. That's why it was inconclusive. Basically meaning 
we can't say sin, but I don't know if we can say it's not, right? And, um, you know, the, the simple question of, is his DNA on the gun or not? They can't answer it because it's not there in full. And it's, it's weird. You can't say yes and then you can't say no. So anyway, um, so that's why it's inconclusive words matter, right? He also acknowledged that the investigators did not present him with a DNA reference sample from Mrs. Kelly Harris to compare, right? And by the way, this is a this is a very popular defense strategy. Um, so let me give you an easy case, Young Dolph's case, right? Young Dolph's case, they didn't even have a defense, honestly. <laughs> like, <laughs> there was no defense. But in many cases, the, the regular defense is this. It ain't me. <laughs> Simply put, it ain't me, okay? I don't know who it is, but it ain't me. In Tory's case, there's another popular way of how sometimes a defense attorney will, will, will do. Now, at times that can be seen as snitching depending on how, how hard you go. Because essentially what you're going to do, you're going to fuck up the state's case. Remember, the state got to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you did it. All you got to tell them, and by the way, that's kind of what the, the whole Rondo number no. 9 C-Day thing is. On appeal... Rondo number nine lawyer saying, well, couldn't that been C day? Right? B basically almost saying everything you said was me could have been somebody else. Like I'm 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 using the defense of saying the evidence points to someone else, probably even more than me. So why am I charged? And that means that you can't convict me because the evidence is pointing to someone else. So that's what Tor that's part of Tory's um um whole thing to say. Well, they ain't really test a chick. People are saying it was a chick, or not. The people like well, some people that was um Sean Kelly at first, but also the DNA and and gunshot residue could have been the chick. Why they didn't test her? So essentially, um, so the DNA from four samples re recovered from the gun. So it was four samples of DNA. He also acknowledged that the investigators did not present it with a DNA reference sample from. Miss Harris, so they he, he couldn't say, oh no, Kelsey's DNA is on the gun. Okay. Um, during the motion for new trial, the defense counsel submitted a declina declaration, right, uh, from the DNA expert Richard Eichelboom, who stated the DNA profile from the sample of the gun is not reliable. It exhibits a disbalance from the left to the right peak in heights, and then there are DNA peaks alleles. Um, way above the 3,000 RFU on the shorter loci. Um, that this increases the chance on the artifacts like stutter and pull up, uh, which were observed by blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay, I'm not trying to bore you with this. Essentially what they're saying, they're saying it shouldn't have been um, interpreted as inconclusive. It should have been, um, uh, so here we go. Hold on. When the number of donors estimated is too high, it will more easily lead to an inclusion uh, lead to an inclusion or to a not excluded conclusion. This declaration um, established that LA County Crime Lab used improper procedures to and incorrect analyses when determining whether Mr. Peterson DNA could be excluded from the samples recovered from the body, oh no, from the body of the firearm. So essentially, they're saying that yo, it shouldn't have been it should have been analyzed as Tory's DNA is not on the gun, right? Rather than ah, uh, it could be, but we don't know, right? And that's one of the things. We don't have to keep going into this. It's a long-ass thing. Y'all could read it at your leisure if you wanted to. Uh, I, I just want to get to some more of the juicier stuff that has come out, right? So, that wasn't it all. Now, let's go to TMZ. So, what ended up happening is that not only did Tory file this writ of habeas corpus that's based on a couple of things, missing evidence. He's basically saying we got a new new um witness that wants to testify by the way again the the prosecutor right or the, or the state attorney general has until i believe it's november 14th or 27 or something like that so it's like a month damn near they have time to respond like they're gonna have a time to respond to all of this right essentially um it's kind of interesting to see like Meg's like lawyer trying to jump in the middle of an appeal process, but they're playing a PR game. Anything that looks good on Tory continue to hurt Meg, right? Okay, cool. So the next thing that was filed, which also includes Rock Nation, is 
What the fuck is this? Diddy's sons are about to get into it with Ray J. Oh, oh hold on. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can't see this. Oh, my God. Hilarious. <laughs> Yo, I, I've been said it, man. Diddy's son got to sit down, man. Diddy's sons are tweaking, bro. Okay, just give me one second. Let's get a TMZ. Let's bring this over here. And then Tory. Let's, oh, my God. Block, motherfucker. I don't want to see your notifications. Here we go. Sorry, chat. Okay, so, so this is the last thing, and then we, we could get off of this Tory stuff. All right. All right, my computer's acting a little slow. It's going to happen. Okay. So, um, Tory essentially... Okay, my computer's acting really fucking slow. It's this, this is a damn ad block. I got to take this ad blocker off because y'all bullied me into getting um, YouTube premium. All right, cool. So, great. Here we go. So, um, Tory's first lawyer was this woman right here. Her name is Sean Holly. You might know her. Again, my computer's moving really slow. You might know her from the OJ case. She was on what they was was now dubbed the dream team of attorneys because people believe having the acquittal of OJ, some of the best lawyers in the game were on, right? And we all know that was led by Johnny Cochran. But we look, Johnny Cochran, dream team. We'll just look that up. They had a dream team. Um, the dream team refers to the team of lawyers that represented OJ um, um, in the murder of his former wife, Nicole Simpson, and supposedly her lover, uh, Ronald Goldman. The team included Robert Shapiro. Okay. We've seen that, that name pop up a few times before. Johnny Cochran, Carl Douglas, Sean Chapman Holly. So that's Sean Holly. Uh, Gerald Eumann, um, Robert Kardashian. That's where the connection does come to um, the whole Kardashian family. That was the father before Bruce popped in, or Kaylin. Alan Dershowitz and F. Bailey and Barry Sheck and Peter Nefold. Okay, all these guys have gone on to do many great things. Robert Blazer and also William Thompson, okay? All these guys have gone on to do many different things, defend a lot of great people, and people have just looked at these guys as the best in the motherfucking game, okay? Obviously, Cochran was, like, seen as, you know, one of the lead guys. He's the whole thing with the glove. Um, Robert Shapiro, he was also, you know, very instrumental as well, and also Robert Kardashian. However, I don't know if we ever saw Sean Holly. Uh, yeah, yeah, she, she, we, we, we don't even, I don't think I remember seeing her in court, but she's a part of this list because she did work on the case. I, I remember her like, you know, addressing the um, any no, no, notorious witnesses or even the judge or jury. But anyway, I say that to say that she's. Once you go through a case like that, you're fucking billing out the ass now. Right. So Tori gets her and Tori, you know. Tori says, all right, bet I got a dream team lawyer. This is a case about me shooting a woman at work. She's a black woman, so they can't see I hate black women because I got a black woman defending me. And what ended up happening is that she dropped out the case. Now, we didn't know about why she dropped out the case until we found out later. And by the way, I guess she's also cool with Megan Cuniff and Sean Holly, a letter to Tori. Because she, somehow there was leaked, okay? There was leaked, give me one second. There was leaked um, emails from Tory to Sean Holly. Now, this is kind of very, this is crazy, if you ask me. You know when they say you have attorney-client privilege? We're, how the hell are we reading an email between Tory and his lawyer? That sounds kind of crazy, but whatever. Anyway, this was November 21st, 2022, to Tory Lanes, also his lawyer that came in afterwards, Jordan Medeshanian, from Sean Holly. Sean Holly was the last attorney. It says, discuss on Saturday, I'm not comfortable in advancing the Kelsey defense. Primarily, which is the defense that Kelsey did it. Remember I told you the, the, one of the, the two type of defenses are pretty popular. I ain't do it, and I don't know who did. Prove that I did it. The other defenses, rather than just saying I ain't do it, that, that's almost a given, let's show reasons why someone else could have done it that creates doubt, right? Remember, you need beyond a reasonable doubt. Anyway, as we discussed on Saturday, I'm not comfortable advancing the Kelsey theory. Be primarily because I don't find it to be a viable strategy. I don't believe in a position. I don't believe my position would change unless Quan, which which clearly they're damn near admitting in this email, 
that Quan was around, which nobody could find magically. Remember, he only showed up for the last day of court. But before, they were like, why is the driver the only sober person not here, right? He was never, he never showed up to the last day. But apparently they're saying, unless Quan is pervasive, or persuasive, I mean, in the preview of his testimony, and you are persuasive under mock cross-examination by George and or Lisa. Even if both of those benchmarks, Quan and you, were to be satisfied, I'm still not certain I would be I would be willing to go forward. In light of that, you should discuss with George his willingness to, and ability to move forward with that defense. And if he can do so by the trial date, December 6th, I will help him get up to speed if that's what's something you're interested in. Okay. Now, there were other emails. Um, there were other emails who basically, here we go. Da, da, da. All right. I think that's the ethics stuff. Okay, bet we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a second. This is another one. Oh, there's another one. Okay, is it this? Uh, all right. There were some other emails that somehow got leaked. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Now, let me give you the sequence of events that has made Tory now supposedly file like a letter towards uh, it's an ethics complaint about the said lawyer. Tory believes, and and this is you know this is now me ad libbing. Um, you, you're gonna have to do the trusted bro source on this. Apparently, when Tory gets this lawyer, Sean Holly, right, he gets her, and she tells him, "Yo, yo, bro, check this out, man. We can't beat this shit." Take a plea. Tory says, I ain't do it. And I think the evidence they have against me is we not taking a plea. This is allegedly. She says, yo, you should probably just take the plea. He says, no, let's explore otherwise. Now she said, all right, fine. Let's see if we could go otherwise. They, they also have another attorney that's pretty much their consultant or pretty much the second lead. And Tory's like, yo, we could probably do the defense by saying Shorty did it. She comes out and says, nah, I don't think that's going to work, bro. And actually, you know, and she's thinking about her reputation as well. Also, you got to think about it. She's a black woman. I'm not saying that that matters, but right. She gets dropped off the case. Now, supposedly what happened, right? So, so already that's kind of a red flag. Your lawyer's trying to get you to take the plea. Usually how it works with lawyers, your lawyers will lay everything on the table. But as soon as you say, Let's go to trial. They bunker down. It's time to go to trial. They don't try to get you to take the plea. You know what I mean? They don't, they're not trying to like, nah, bro, you should take. But allegedly, maybe that's what happened. Okay, cool. So she eventually gets off the case. But then she drops a book. And this becomes interesting. Because the book that she drops, is it a book? Uh, let me just make sure. Sean Holly book. Let's go here. Oh, shit. Uh, is it this? It's not, is it Sean Holly? No, no, that's a nigga. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, never mind. It was a who she was she was a celebrity artist. We know she's a celebrity attorney. She she became the co-executive producer of a, a Hulu television series series called Reasonable Doubt. Now, that's very interesting, chat. Okay? Let's look that up. Hulu Reasonable Doubt is loosely based on her experience. So, again, now, I don't know the exact timing on this, but apparently, and we can look at the timing, the timing, the release was September 27th, 2022. This is, so it dropped after Tory. It dropped after, uh, no, no, no. It, you know, it dropped after she left Tory's, you know, I think we could, we, we could, let's Google that. We just want to make sure dates are right here, right? Sean Holly withdraws Tory Lanes. When was that? Da, 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 da. Come on, come on, come on. Show me from ages ago. 
from ages ago. We could probably find it in the other shit. When did she quit? When did she quit? When did she quit? Here we go. Let's go back to this. Let's go to here. Da, 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 or here. No, no. Here and here. Because this is a complaint. When did she quit? I was convicted. We just want to know when she withdrew. Oh, it's the same year. Okay. The same year as, oh, as a couple months before my trial. You see? Down here, the last line right here. 2022. Okay. So, ironically, she's representing Tory who's going up against Rock Nation's biggest asset. And obviously, he's going up against the state, not going up against her personally, but she is the victim in the case. But that's Rock Nation's biggest asset. Now, we all know Alex Spiro. Like, right now, put it like this. If, I don't know, name somebody on Rock Nation. If me and Rock, if me and somebody on Rock Nation got into it and Alex Spiro said he was down to defend me, I know I'm going to jail for life. You know why? Because... His bread is buttered over the other side. He has no incentive to make sure that I, I, I beat his number one client. You know what I mean? Or, or client, interested in client that they have a client, right? So, but but we knew that about Alex Spiro. But what we're talking about now, this is a case of um, um, Sean Holly. So you're telling me she quits being Tory's attorney and then a co-executive produces a drama or, or like some Hulu television series called Reasonable Doubt. Now, just a little bit of Googling. Jay-Z first album name. Well, that could be coincidence. Could be coincidence. I don't know. All right. Let's just keep it going. All right. So she, she, this it's probably got nothing to do with Jay-Z, right? That's what I'm thinking, Chad. Let's go to an episode guide. Let's go to an episode guide. I just want to go. Let's go from one. First episode is called Can't Knock the Hustle. Let me just Google. Jay-Z can't knock. It's a Jay-Z song. All right. It's a little bit of a coincidence. Can't be too much. <laughs> And I mean, shit happens in the world. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Can't not hustle literally, right? Second one. Family Feud. Oh, oh. I don't even remember that song. Family Feud. Jay-Z and Beyonce got a song called Family Feud. What? Come on. Everybody talks about Family Feud. Now, come on. like you know, Come on, man. Nobody wins with a Family Feud. Come on. Come on. Now. Let's go to song three. 99 Problems. I don't got to Google that one, but I'll do it anyway. Jay-Z 99. Wait, so you telling me my lawyer quit and dropped a TV series? My lawyer that's defended me against Jay-Z's company, Rock Nation's, like one of their biggest assets, Meg, quit defending me and drops a TV show and names the show after Jay-Z's infamous classic album, Reasonable Doubt. And every episode is named after a Jay-Z song? Yeah, Tori. <laughs> Yo, Tori in jail right now swinging in the air, bro. Like, what? <laughs> 99 problem. Guilty until proven innocent. L we're just doing this for fun. Jay-Z got a song called Guilty until proven. No, it, it, so ambitious. Nah, he don't got a song. I don't remember no song now. got a song called so ambitious renegade we all know that him and m nigga what nigga who i gotta make the song cry this is episode eight people i'm already home jay-z nah that gotta be only season one let's get to season two by the way, chat, chat, an episode dropped October 17th. So this shit's still going on this year. <laughs> but let's get at it. Episode one, can I, y'all know can I live, right? Jay-Z got a song called episode two. I know he got a song called volume. 
Jay Z episode two. You got a song called Episode Two. Jay Z has a five episode two. I don't know. I don't know. All right, maybe one. Maybe one ain't a Jay Z song, right? Oh, then this is called Episode Three. Does Jay Z don't have no damn song called Episode Three? What the fuck? I don't be knowing. Wait, is this? I don't know, dog. Anyway. After that prime time, guilty until proven innocent, this can't be life. Jay-Z, this can't be life. <laughs> Yo, Tory right now in prison saying, this can't be life. Not my attorney backdooring me. <laughs> Getting backdoored by the attorney is diabolical. <laughs> what? <laughs> this can't be life. Venus versus Mars. Change the game. Who you with? Encore. Can I get an encore? Like, listen to these lyrics. It's like she's sending Tori a message, gang. Listen to the lyrics. <laughs> Can I get an encore? Do you want more? Tori in prison like, no, I don't want no more years. Leave me alone. <laughs> God damn. Cook and roll with the Brooklyn boys. So for one last time, I need y'all to roar. Who you know fresh in the hole riddle me that? The rest of y'all know where I'm lyrically at, can none of y'all mirror me back. Y'all hearing me rap. It's like hair G rap in a prime. I'm like <laughs> young H.O. rap, grateful dead, back to take over the globe, not break bread. Holy. So let me just do Tori's part, then we'll we'll go to her response. I'm gonna be fair. Tori's ripping his former attorney apart in a formal ethics complaint to the state bar. We actually have the ethics complaint, so let's just read that. Since October 26, 2024, it's submitted to the State Bar of California, it's Daystar Peterson, it says, this is a formal ethics complaint. I'm making a formal complaint with the State Bar against my former attorney, Sean Halley Chapman, State Bar, that's her number. Miss um, Holly was my former attorney in my criminal case, People vs. Daystar, K. Tory Lanes in the Los Angeles Superior, Co Superior County um, case, blah, 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 blah. My attorney, Sean Holly, violated her duties to me from the beginning of her representation to the time she abruptly withdrew and in doing so breached her code of professional conduct as well as California law. Her representation severely hampered my case and set me at a disadvantage which directly led to my conviction. Miss Sean Holly, first breach of conduct was that she had a conflict of interest she failed to disclose to me before agreeing to represent me. Briefly on the background, a musician and artist that is known professionally as Tory Lanez. I was convicted in 2022 of assaulting another musician that is known by the name Meg Thee Stallion. I did not commit this crime um, uh, or assault or harm Meg Thee Stallion. When I, first, when I was first charged with this crime, I sought out Miss Holly to defend me. I was referred to Miss Holly by my entertainment attorney as an excellent criminal defense attorney with experience of representing high profile and celebrity clients. After consulting with her, Ms. Holly agreed to serve as my uh, defense uh, counsel. A dollar amount was agreed upon, and I signed her retainer agreement. Ms. Holly failed to disclose to me what Ms. Holly failed to disclose to me was that at the time she agreed to represent me and took payment from me is that she was directly involved in a business relationship with the same company that had a business relationship with the alleged victim in my case, Meg the Stallion. That company was Rock Nation, okay? At the time, Meg Thee Stallion was an artist signed and managed by Rock Nation. Actually, not signed. She was managed, 1501. I think now she might be signed, but she was managed, definitely, for show. At the time of our consultation, Miss Holly was one of the principal producers of a TV show titled Reasonable Doubt. Reasonable Doubt is a legal drama based loosely upon Miss Holly's life. In the credits of the show, she is listed as both the producer of the show and its legal counsel. The show first premiered in September of 2022, the same year and just a couple of months before my trial. The owner and CEO of Rock Nation is a musician and artist known as Jay-Z. There are extensive ties between the Reasonable Doubt, the show, and Rock Nation and Jay-Z. The title of the show, Reasonable Doubt, is also the same name of Jay-Z's critically acclaimed debut breakout album and the title of every episode so it bears the name of one of Jay-Z's biggest songs, which Jay-Z would have to clear the songs in order to be cleared. Damn, I guess the music was not involved. I didn't know the music played in the song. It has come to my attention that season two of the show now includes music by Rock Nation artist and my accuser, Meg The Stallion. Apparently, Miss Holly has a daughter 
that is a backup singer to Beyonce, Jay-Z's wife. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Yo, what? <laughs> Yo, this is the back door from heaven. <laughs> what? Listen to this, chat. So Jay-Z would have to clear the songs, right, for them to be in it. I don't know if the song's in it, but Tori's making that claim. It has come to my attention that season two um, of the show includes music by Rock Nation artist and my accuser, Meg Thee Stallion. Apparently, Miss Holly has a daughter that is a backup singer to Beyonce, Jay-Z's wife. I was completely unaware of the show. Miss Holly's involvement with the show or involvement with Rock Nation at the time of the consultation. consultation. And Miss Holly never informed me at any time of her uh, connection to Rock Nation. That's a proper back door. I ain't gonna hold you. That's a back, that's a proper back door. <laughs> um, she never informed me at the time of her connect connection to Rock Nation. Miss Holly had a legal and professional duty to disclose her relationship with Rock Nation to me prior to a, agreeing to represent me and taking my money from me um, or at some point thereafter. This conflict of interest and consequent, consequent breach of loyalty was exacerbated, uh, exacerbated, <laughs> I'm fucking up on that word, by the fact the person that assisted the alleged victim after the incident with medical care with police and authorities and who, who spoke with an advised witnesses and or others involved in the incident with what to say to the authorities was a person named Desiree Perez the CEO of Rock Nation Records. Ms. Perez, apparently, was even allowed to be present in the room with the police. With the, what the fuck? Ms. Perez was apparently, apparently was even allowed to be present in the room with the police and the accuser when the accuser was being interviewed and gave other statements to the police. I have been since made aware, Ms. Holly represented Miss Perez and or Rock Nation slash entities in private and non-profit -pro associated, um, um, private or non-profit, private or for non-profit uh, associated with Rock Nation in legal matters prior to agreeing to represent me. I was not signed to or in business with Rock Nation at the time of the alleged incident. In effect, my counsel was in business with the same company that had a substantial investment with the person who was alleged I harmed her. I was unaware of these relationships at the time I consulted with the attorney. Holly, with attorney Holly, I'm sorry, and she did not disclose to me then. Instead, she assured me she could and would represent me to the fullest and based on that, I agreed to pay her between 200 and $300,000, the last payment. That was made to her was during my trial on December 17, 2022. On the very next day, she quit. <laughs> Yo, that's, <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. Yo, that's crazy. That is crazy. Now, here's the funny part. Tori didn't do some due diligence then. I'm being very fair here because I think the first episode came out in August. But this wasn't a popular show. Still should have known. Like the, the show started. The show started to air before Tori got convicted, right? Because Tori got convicted. The, the trial started in 22, December 18, 2022, right? Yeah, so he, he should have known, right? Or it was during the trial, actually. The second breach of conduct is a is direct is a direct result of the first. And as a result of her conflict of interest, Holly did not represent me competently. Sorry. Or digitally diligently. Oh, what if I diligently? I can't speak. And worked against me. For first during our initial consultation and throughout the process. I told Holly I would not take a plea. That I was completely innocent and would not accept a plea that would imply or make it seem guilty or, or of anything. Which, by the way, that is very common of people who are accused with some stuff. You see, the DA is incentivized. Hopefully, they don't take the case as personal, right? They're just there doing the job. But for you, you, you as if you're a Tory, if you're like, I didn't shoot this woman. I'm not going to take no plea that have me pleading guilty to something that implies I shot this woman. Fuck no. I'm not. No. No, I didn't shoot her, Right? So that, that happens, uh, you know, for example, let's say sexual assault, right? S say 
you know, they have sexual battery, sexual assault, then, then they have some other sexual charges. Imagine they're like, which I, I don't think the government would do this, but because it's such of a crazy charge. But, but let's say they said, well, actually, they have done it. Let's say you plead guilty to a lesser sexual charge, but not one that's a first degree felony like sexual assault. Somebody might be like, no, 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 I don't give a fuck. Me pleading guilty to any sexual charge is going to make me look like a fucking creep. Like I did it. Hell no. Right. So let's go to trial. Right. So I, I get why Tory probably said, bro, I'm not doing that, dog. I'm not I'm not pleading guilty. And, and it probably was like maybe they wanted him to plead guilty to discharging a firearm. What would be the implications of the fans? Right. It doesn't say you shot nobody, but it says you you shot. And there's a woman who's a big celebrity claiming, I got shot in this incident. So by putting two and two together, you take a plea that you shot a gun. Or not even say shoot the gun, let's go less, that you had a gun. Well, if if the victim who's a celebrity is saying she got shot and you plead guilty to having a gun, people are going to put two and two together. That means you shot her, duh. Like You know what I mean? So I get why he would say, no, 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 fuck that, right? And obviously, remember, that there's um, ICE ramifications because of his um, immigration status, too. Think about that. Okay, cool. During the process, okay. Um, so I would not take a plea that was completely innocent. I would not accept a plea that would imply that made me seem guilty of anything. But later, Holly told my DNA expert to not perform, whoa, extensive studies on the gun so as to show I never touched it because she was going to have me take a plea. Well, now here's the thing. The DNA expert has to, I'm wondering if that's going to happen. Now, I don't know if you know how court works. A lot of these, 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 these lawyers and defense attorneys, they use the same witnesses. So if they do gun cases all the time, they probably have their gun expert that they use all the time. This would kind of assume that this, or, or this DNA expert that Sean Holly was going to use, right? Sean Holly's DNA expert was going to, it has to go against Sean Holly, and probably Sean Holly gets that person a lot of work. Tory's hoping to never ever get charged again, right? So it's not in the DNA's experts' um, best interest to back Tory's case, but if he did, or if she did, whoever that person is, is very important. Okay, cool. Um, so Tory's claiming that Sean Holly told the DNA expert, "Don't do too much test on the gun because he gonna take a plea anyway." So he says, "I was never gonna take a plea." And consequently, I had no evidence to produce at trial to con... Uh, oh, shit. Yeah, all right, this is a big one. If if your lawyer tells the DNA e expert, nah, you don't got to test the gun, we're taking a plea, then y'all go to trial and you look embarrassed because you, the, the the state comes back. Now, here's the thing. I, I think Sean Holly is going to try to defend herself by saying this. We thought that when the state came back to us with their findings, that it was inconclusive, that was going to suffice as people interpreted it as, well, Tory's DNA is not on the gun. So we didn't bother spending the money to get our own DNA expert because it seems to be favorable what the, what the, what the, what the state did, right? The state did some shit that favors us. We don't need our own, um, fucking wit um expert because theirs basically kind of helped us out except there was an argument about this whole inconclusive thing and the you know i got to give credit to the da's the da's then use that to say inconclusive means that we just don't know but it could be there now granted if they should have had an expert to say the chances are so low or to mean that yo we just can't come up with a conclusion um now granted the most favorable favorable thing would say you could exclude Tory, which apparently this is in post. They're saying that there's some tests and an analyst that could analyze that to say based on Tory's height, his weight, his fucking not that really that matters to well height does a bit. Um, based on the DNA, there you could exclude certain people from the population, and Tory would be one of those people, right? So, so whole drama. Okay. <laughs> But he's basically saying that his law law his lawyer forewent using their own expert. Okay? Cool. All right, cool. All right. The the 
Um, she was having to take a plea. I was never going to take a plea. Consequently, I had no evidence to produce at trial to contradict the, uh, the district attorney's assertion that it was inconclusive. That was inconclusive. Whether my DNA was on the gun, the absence of my DNA on the gun would have led to my acquittal, right? So basically, he's saying if there was an expert that, and by the way, Tori has an expert now who has analyzed this to say, nah, we could exclude Tori. They're saying if they had that then, that would have led to an acquittal, okay? During the process, I was repeatedly accused of violating a protective order that was in place. The first time I was uh, accused of rushing the stage at Meg The Stallion show during a Rolling Loud concert, at the hearing, Holly did not argue or demand the district attorney to prove the incident occurred. Oh, man, yeah, this, is, this is sticky. No such proof existed because it did not happen. Cameras were everywhere. No camera showed me rushing the stage. I was temporarily arrested and had to be bailed out. The second time I was accused of violating a protective order with a tweet that didn't mention anyone's name and only after being told by Miss Holly, the tweet didn't violate the order. Again, I was temporarily arrested and had to be bailed out. The third time involved the incident in Chicago where I was accused without any corroboration of violating the order. The judge in the case said he did not see any violation, but my counsel, Holly, said to the judge, House arrest would be okay. Oh, the back door, gang. <laughs> yeah, you can just put him on house arrest. It's all good. Yeah, it's fine. What? What you mean? Put, what the? <laughs> Yo, it do hit different when your lawyers are op. <laughs> it do hit different when your lawyer is your op. <laughs> okay. Uh, said house arrest would be okay. I had no. I had specifically told her when asked, no, I don't want house arrest. At As a direct of result of Holly failing to defend me at a previous bail hearing and for violation of the protective order, I was subsequently denied bail upon conviction um, pending my appeal. The court said I had too many previous violations to grant me bail. Finally, and most egregiously, she withdrew as my lawyer during the course of my trial, leaving me to scramble to find new counsel and having new counsel hands tied by the work she had already done. Her initial reason for withdrawing uh, was a statement from one of the witnesses that Holly was trying to bribe her and affect her testimony on my behalf. That was never true. It then became she had she had, she had another trial started, starting during my trial in Washington, D.C., any calendar conflict she had or was going to have, notwithstanding her business relationship to Rock Nation, she should have known um, before, uh, been known long before my trial started, and she should have withdrawn then. Instead, she took my money, barely offered a defense on my behalf, and then abandoned me in the middle of my trial while fighting for my life. The real reason she withdrew from my case is because she was unable to steer me into taking a plea to negligent discharge. Oh, okay, so this was going to be a plea. Negligent discharge by admitting I shot the gun. So, okay, that makes sense, right? So, Tori doesn't want to plead guilty. This is in the age of he's thinking, if they think I shoot this woman, my career is done anyway. I got to fight this to the very end. So, it was going to be negligent um, discharge of a gun, which could be shooting in the air, right? That, that's the charge, shooting in the air. That would have fucked a lot of shit up. Cool. Um, because people would have heard this woman say she got shot. They would have put two and two together. You discharge a weapon, that means you shot her, even though it wouldn't be aggravated. It wouldn't be any type of assault. Anyway, so uh, the plea was uh, negligent discharge by a man that shot the gun. I never did this. And it is in my firm belief she was attempting to have me agree to this plea at the direction of urging of the people who she was in business with for her TV show. Rock Nation, who were in business with my accuser and had a substantial investment in her. My accuser had made numerous public appearances and statements accusing me of shooting her and Rock Nation did sorry and Rock Nation did not want her to be made out as a liar and a villain. To sum it up, Miss Holly failed me as my lawyer for these points and he's going to sum up these points that you just read. She failed to tell me up front about her extensive relationship with Rock Nation as it was a direct um it was which was directly related to the person accusing me of harming her and possibly her daughter. Okay? Basically saying her daughter had some relation to Rock Nation because allegedly her daughter is a backup singer for, for Beyonce. I don't know. She failed to tell me she previously worked with the CEO of Rock Nation Records, Desiree Perez, 
which is a substantial uh, has a substantial investment in my accuser, she failed to tell me that she had done legal work on behalf of Rock Nation or entities associated with Rock Nation or principles of Rock Nation in some fashion. She also failed seemingly on purpose to comp competently and diligently, diligently, geez, I can't speak, represent me. She told my DNA expert not to conduct the studies that which would have proved that I did not shoot the accuser. She failed to adequately defend me against the allegation of violating the protective or court order. And she told the court I agreed to house arrest when I did not. She withdrew from my case during the middle of my trial and did not and did so for reasons that were not true. And in the end, I lost my case and was convicted of a crime. I did not commit because of the actions of Sean Holly, which I believe was acting either explicitly or by implication at the behest or in the interest of Rock Nation. I want a return of the funds I paid Rock Nation and appropriate discipline to be imposed for her many breaches of professional conduct. Sincerely, Daystar Peterson. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Now, <clears throat> Sean Holly has since responded. She responded to uh, Lauren LaRosa, and she said this. She says, this is a statement from um, whatever. Oh, so, never mind. Let's start with this one then. Sorry. Hi, just spoke with Sean Holly on this Tory Lanez filing, um, who tells me I've never had business ties to Rock Nation, and Rock Nation has nothing to do with the television show Reasonable Doubt, which I co-produce. Mr. Peterson has made these claims over a year ago to the state bar, which rejected them and promptly closed the matter. Okay, continued. Holly first issued the statement when the story was first reported on TMZ, but still wanted to share. Okay. Um, then there's a rebuttal from Tory's legal team who said... So um, with a statement from Tory's legal team in response to Sean Holly, it says Tory has never filed anything with the bar since he's been a client of hers, of ours, even before. Tory was a retained client of Unite the People USA when he was sentenced in December 22nd and was working with his team prior to his retainer. Even when Sean Holly was still a part of his legal team, today the first bar complaint, today was the first bar complaint Tory has ever filed that the United people are, is aware of. Hmm. Let me see what's up with this um, TMZ article. I think we can catch it here. Okay. So here's an update. <clears throat> all right, cool. So, da, 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 all right. Tori's allegation, we read through everything. Mm-hmm. Cool. I, I won't play the video, but this is a show. Is that Morris Chestnut? Okay, my boy. All right. Da -da -da. Okay. Now, let me just read the update real quick. <clears throat> so, first of all, they had a new source that actually just doubled down right now. Wow, seven minutes ago. So right now it's one oh five. Right now it's four. No, well, one thirteen Pacific time. It's four thirteen Eastern time. I'm on the East Coast. So literally, like about seven minutes ago, they they says another source close to the situation is doubling down that in fact reasonable doubt series has no connection to Jay Z or Rock Nation, other than for inspiration in the name. Um, I'm, if this if there's music used, there had to be some clearances, and and that could still be true with clearances there, but still, it does seem fishy that you do an entire TV show with names dedicated to Jay Z's albums and songs, if you have even if it's not a financial interest or you didn't work with him, if you have no interest of trying to like cozy up to him or you're not dick sucking, and I'm using that word as you know, as a colloquial in, in the sense of. You're trying to be, you know, <laughs> you clearly are Team J, right? Like, you, I want to use, like, a Meek Mill album for, like, my, my docuseries about my life, right? Like, yo, the first one's called, the first episode's called The Intro. The next one's called Rico. The next one's called, uh, no, I wouldn't do that, right? 
Okay, Attorney Sean Holly is strongly denying these allegations. Um, Tory Lanez has brought an ethics complaint he filed with the state of the state bar of California last week. TMZ's learned that uh, of a letter sent by Holly's counsel to the state bar in November 2023, saying in no certain terms that Holly has no relationship whatsoever with Rock Nation. The letter goes on to emphasize Miss Holly's never represented Rock Nation or nor has Rock Nation ever been a client of our law firm. Okay, as for Tory Lane's uh, Holly abandoned him at a critical point of his trial and blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Got you. Well, we'll see. We'll see. It, it does look funny. It does look funny. But maybe she just, you know, how old is she? You know, a lot of these old heads grew up on like, like their heyday was like, um, reason without like, you know, how old is Sean Holly? How old is she? She, do we have a date of birth with her? I don't know. Sean Chapman Holly. Yeah, she probably was in her, you know, probably was in her prime. Was looking like a baddie back then. You know what I mean? How old is she? Do we know her age? Age. Look at her age. Yeah, we don't know her age. Yeah. She looked like, how old does that thing she look? That's her? Okay. Yeah, she probably in her like 50s, 60s right now. So back in the 90s. When reasonable doubt dropped, that's like 30 years ago. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah, 30 years ago, she probably was hot. Probably looked like an IG model. Yeah, she probably like you know had some good memories then, and she now is making a TV show about her life. I'm pretty sure she she's not listening to motherfucking yeet. So maybe she, maybe that's why. But I ain't gonna lie, it, it, it does look a little fishy. It just look it look a little fishy though. I'm gonna be honest with you. Look a little bit fishy. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Somebody said she's too old, fam. <laughs> Somebody, uh, let me see. Let me see, bro. I don't know. Let me see what this is. All right, is this music? We ain't finna listen to the music now. I ain't finna listen to the music. About to get flagged. City of Star. Okay, now nah, let me just watch the trailer. I'm a good lawyer, and I want to win. I killed JT. One of my best friends called me today to tell me that she killed her husband. I'm a savage. Classy. Chanel needs an attorney. Y'all got it. <laughs> Y'all got it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got it. Now nah, the back door is open. <laughs> Close that back door. <laughs> oh, nah. Close that back door. I can't get snaked by my homie. <laughs> Close that back door. <laughs> can't get snaked by my attorney. <laughs> If if my attorney go walk in court with me and the person saying she shot me is Meg and I see I look up and I see this is a trailer and I want to win. I killed JT. One of my best friends called me today to tell me that she killed her husband. I was savage. Classy. Chanel needs an attorney who's some domestic violence cases. Corey Cash is one trial away from becoming a What? <laughs> you know the tour, it was basically domestic violence, right? Household name. If it ain't about the money, then you know I'm gonna ignore it. Oh, nah. Oh, nah. <laughs> nah, this is a back door. I like this. No, I don't like this, actually. This is fucked up. Yo, they backdoor Tory crazy. Yo, I ain't gonna lie to you. You know what's so fucked up? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you another reason why the back door allegedly was open. Tory, y'all remember when Tory went independent? Uh Tory leaves Interscope. Yeah, Tory left Interscope 2020. He was like, now nah, I'm about to be independent now. I'm good. This and third. He don't got no more label backing. Man, I'm pretty sure somebody called called the plate. Man, backdoor that little nigga, man. That little fucking leprechaun thing. This is backdoor. They backdoored my boy. Nigga thought he was gonna drop on Distro Kid and go platinum. And I ain't gonna lie, he was running it up too. They were like, yo, this nigga think he about to he about to make a billion dollars on Distro Kid and Tunecore? Oh hell nah, nigga. 
Hell nah. He said I'm a savage. <laughs> oh, yeah. One of my best friends Yo, called me today crazy. to tell me that she killed her husband. I was Classy. Oh, Chanel needs an attorney who's in domestic violence oh, cases. Oh, Corey Cash is one trial away from becoming a household name. If it ain't about the money, then you know I'm gonna ignore it. I think I love it, love it. I promise you, I won't let you down. He gave me an ultimatum between him and my career. Asked if she wanted to be a lawyer or a wife. People are split whether she is a survivor or a trophy wife who killed her husband in cold blood. My client will not be posting bail. What about what's good for Chanel? I know for a fact that if we don't follow the right plan, we lose. Well, I suggest you take some of that bass out your voice, homie. We are all here for you. This is where I'd rather be. You make it difficult to want to stay. How do you expect me to believe anything you say? I care about what happens to Chanel. I want to win just as much as you do. I'm not going to stop. We make a great team. You don't want to be with me. Man, they got me go through this bitch, man. But you can't stop me from loving you. I make a call and get up. Kiss me if you can. I'm the best lawyer you've ever worked with. Always bet on Jax. Yo, this got nothing to do with Rock Nation. I'm a savage in the background. This shit called Reasonable Doubt. Okay. <laughs> Yo, this is crazy. I might watch it, though. It seems kind of cool, right? Damn. And they lined that nigga Tory up, man. <laughs> Yo. Yo, this is a back door, bro. How they line that nigga Tory up, man. That's this is my opinion. <laughs> Yo, if I found this out, I'm writing a letter too. Yo, you can't be defending my Yo, you can't be making a TV show to keep it real. My lawyer gotta hate the person that's going against us. Nigga, we a team. That's the op. If you scoring her music, putting it on soundtrack, if you the executive producer, you're overseeing everything. That's how it works when you do a TV show. The executive producer, you know what I mean? You, you you oversee everything. So you telling me I'm going to I'm going to fight for my freedom against Meg Thee Stallion, who's powered by Rock Nation and the nigga who own Rock Nation is Jay-Z. But you agreed to the name of the show as reasonable doubt. Name everything after Jay-Z. And then the trailer you use Meg's music. Now nah, it's the back door, bro. Now nah, it's the back door. Close that back door. Can't got can't get snaked by my attorney. Holy, bro. That's crazy. All right. Okay. You know what? And I'm, I'm going to just do my little disclaimer line. Sean Holly's a well, well reputed um, attorney, and these are all allegations for what she's answered to, claiming that Tory brought this a year ago. Tory claims he did not. And we will see what the California State Bar says about any of these allegations, okay? And also, we'll see if it matters in any uh, um, subsequent appeal hearings. But as far as what I personally think, this looked like a back door, okay? I'm sorry. This looked crazy. You know what I mean? Yo, this looked like the chick that was at the Fulio case. Yo, this chick at the Fulio case, like, showed up to the party and be like, yeah, this nigga Fulio over here. This nigga drunk as a motherfucker, man. Come hurry up and come kill this nigga, man. This nigga is this nigga is wide open, man. I'm actually counting only two niggas with guns. Listen, just bring the top over here. We gonna meet y'all at the Holiday Inn. Kill this nigga. Yeah, that's the type of backdoor this is. This is flagrant. This is wild. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Okay. Damn, man. <laughs> yo, this is one of the, yo. Uh, when I see this, <laughs> it remind me of this. This right here. It remind me of this, man. <laughs> it remind me of this. Jay, you want cold, motherfucker? Is this? You can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Another one snake, man. Jay, Jay, you a cold nigga. <laughs> you can't keep getting away with this. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to my boy. Yo, listen, man. Let, let's say a collective prayer for Tory. Again, you know, we're, we're just uh, neutral arbiters of hopefully the truth. Um, listen, did Meg get injured that night? It appears she got injured somehow. 
Um, the Tory shooter, uh, we don't know Tory shot her. And I think that's the problem with this case. This case didn't come back with us knowing for as a fact of what happened. This case came back even after the verdict with us asking too many questions. And if you're going to say the court system is meant to be beyond a reasonable doubt, how the hell we go through a trial and we got more doubt now than we had before? Shit crazy. I don't know, right? And I, and I guess that's that's the vitriol that some people are feeling. All right. Close that back door, man. This shit is crazy. <laughs> Yo, chat, could y'all believe that shit? Yo, the equivalent of this, man. Yo. <laughs> Yo, the, the equivalent of this is Lil Durk getting a lawyer and turns out the lawyer ended up being Quando Rondo's uncle. Like, come on, bro. Like, yo. Yo, come on, bro. Or like, he, yo, Lil Durk get a lawyer and is, and the lawyer is like, I don't know, the tour manager for motherfucking uh, um, young boy or something like that. Like, come on, man. Yo, the back door. Yo, this is crazy. The back door is still the most effective play, bro. You got you got to really watch what you... Um, you got to watch out, man. Anyway. All right. Uh, we do still have a bunch of other topics. Let me tell you where we are. We kind of got through the YSL stuff. We got through the 6 9 stuff. We got through the Tory stuff. That is good. We're, we're actually only about three hours in, so we're doing pretty good on time. I think we're kind of moving and, and trucking forward ahead. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Uh, let me I'll delete a couple of things off of this list. We do have a Dirk segment that's probably going to take us about an hour and a half. We probably could get to it now. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, I think we should do that now. We're probably gonna do that, and then, all right. Yeah, we talked about Meg. We'll delete that off of it. Yeah, there's a Dirk segment. It's gonna take us about uh, about an hour and a half. We still got Tom Brady and Giselle uh, Bundeshin. That BS, but that's gonna get towards the end of everything. By the way, we're gonna talk about Christian Rock. Uh, t- I ain't going to lie to you. She is fresh out of jail. She's a new woman. But damn it, we, we're we hearing some stuff that we're probably finally understanding why she's been been so effed up. She came out, and not to really give a spoiler because we're going to talk about it later. She came out and said her sister made her eat her pussy at seven, seven years old. I couldn't believe it. I got to play this. I know we're not about to talk about it now. Or maybe we just talk about it because this is crazy. This is crazy. Christian Rock, seven years old. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah I got to see this shit. I don't know what type of shit Zeus got going on, chat. Hold on, let me see if I go. Listen to yeah, this. You made me eat your Listen. butt. You said what? I'm dying. I'm dying. I remember when this I was seven. You made me eat your butt. Chat. It's all making sense now. It's all making sense. She said, you remember when I was seven? You made me eat your pussy. Now, that's her older sister she's talking about. You see why the baby came out looking like Charles Barkley. She was drinking wheat. Oh no, no, she was drinking, drinking honey, smoking Kush, beefing with her baby daddy, hitting him over the head with a bottle. You start to realize that, you know, a lot of the craziness and dysfunction, and I know people like these days people keep talking about toxic relationships, is really coming from a place of broken people. If you eat your sister's vagina at seven, not only is that incestual, nasty. And I'm guessing her sister was a minor too. But still, like, where's the parents? What's- Man, this whole Tory case. I really hope Tory gets the justice that he deserves. You feel me? I hope the truth comes out. Um, I don't know what happened in the case. A lot of people are going to come forward. Tory, I feel like he hopefully has a good case with all this stuff that he's came forward with. And I hope everything works out for him. I hope, feel me, justice is served. If he didn't shoot Meg or any of that stuff, I feel like he deserves to be freed. He deserves, you feel me, the guilty verdict to be dropped, to not be, uh, to be uh, kicked out the U.S., you feel me? It's a crazy game, crazy world. It's your boy Big Egg News. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I am out.